No. I can play for you, but I'd rather not. Okay? I'd rather not do it, but if I have to do it, I will. And it's just because I have other people that I have to provide for. Okay, this is Mix here, and this is Run the Ones. We're going to be focusing on John Gruden. And for us to be moving back and not forward in 21st century. This just in, John Gruden has resigned from his position as the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, earlier today, I had a phone call with Indy about the situation. Of course, once again, we recorded the call. We knew there were going to be some gems. More on that in a minute. But first, let's catch you up on the situation surrounding John Gruden. Let's take a look and listen from around the media circuit. Check it out. I hate to start on a down note. John Gruden, yes, something that happened a decade ago, literally, uh, 10 years and a few months ago. In July of 2011. And, uh, and of course, the head of the Players Association is Demore Smith, who's an African-American. And Gruden sent an email to Bruce Allen who was then the president of the Washington football team, Rob. And the email said this, Dumb Morris, so he played on his name and, and it didn't insinuate. I mean, he basically stated that he's dumb, all right? Gruden wrote that Demoris Smith had, I'm quoting, lips the size of Michelin tires. It is, it, it, what's so disappointing, Skip, is that when he was angry, this is what he went to. That's the go-to move. I'm not racist, but what's your go-to move when you get upset with a person of a different race or a person of a different uh, agenda? What will you go to? What's your go-to move? Mm -hmm. This. And I've told you there are people that will tell you the truth are angry, drunks, and kids. Yep. Yep. So the question I have for John Gruden, John Gruden, if you're not what you say you are, would you have said these words to D. Smith to his face? You see, you told, you, you, you spoke your heart because you had no idea these emails would ever make the light of day. He said, there's some other things that I said in there also. So he's trying to go ahead and get in front of these, Skip. That's going to come out eventually. But this is not a good look for John Gruden, especially, yeah. Skip, when you're in the business of leading. Because a lot of what John Gruden's success has been built on the backs of black men. I want John Gruden to know that. I'm just going to start this by asking a question. Are you surprised? Because I'm not surprised. And I'm glad a lot of these incidents that were first discovered or, you know, blown up were not discovered in the cancel culture era. Because today's cancel culture deals more with the sensationalization rather than the implications of what's actually happening, meaning it's more of a distraction than anything else. When the pandemic was at its peak and there was mass chaos, no one talked about why those things were happening per se. It was more or less us against them, them against us. And the the true meaning of the outrage was lost. So we got more and more distracted from what was really going on. And that's what I don't like about today's cancel culture or the cancel culture era is because it's more or less the sensationalization. It's blown up. Everyone's talking about it and arguing about it. And it gets away from what actually happened. You can argue about what you know, what you think about it, but think about what's really going on.
It's, it's a part of a learned behavior. It's a part of a mentality. John Gruden said he was angry when he wrote that. And one thing that I that I like that Shannon Sharp uh, alluded to, and is that he claimed that he's not a racist, but when he gets angry, he regresses to racist appetites. Come on, man. Like, <laughs> that's just a proper way to say you're racist, you know, at, at the end of the day. When it comes down to it, you're a racist. That's who you are. Stop it. Now, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at that. But ESPN and all of these other media outlets were will blow it up as if it, this is a big story. And it's like, it's not a big story. How many times have we seen this with Hulk Hogan? How many times have we seen this with this person and that person, a Karen calling the police, being racist on TV? It's almost as if there there are plants in, in, in the media that are just going to show these incidents because they know people are going to bellyache and talk about them. It's like, we know people are racist worldwide. I don't need a, a, a an email from 10 years ago to know that there's a racist person out there that feels this way and has this mentality. I don't need that. Just like I didn't need a, a, a publication of uh, police brutality, uh, but with the with the racial undertone. I don't need to see that story to know that that's what goes on. I've, I've simply existed and lived life. <laughs> that's all I needed to do. We're dedicated to building an outstanding football organization. An organization that we ourselves can be proud of. An organization that will represent ourselves and our community. With these thoughts in mind, we're going to predicate this organization on class, pride, and poise.